Many of you guys have voiced to me that your doubles tend to be weak, uneven from hand to hand, and just kind of lopsided. Not open and strong enough, uh, definitely not loud enough, and most certainly not fast enough. Well, there's honestly just one core fix that gets all these things on track. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I believe that no matter who you are, you can conquer the drums. You can master the instrument when you're armed with the right know-how. And I believe this video is gonna help you do just that. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and check out my free guide on how to master one-handed hi-hat 16s. It's in the description below. Some of the biggest issues that I see with doubles from my students is maybe they're weak, where you, you can't really get them as even and strong as you'd like. Or maybe they're a little bit lopsided, where if you have a dominant right hand, the right hand is sounding great, but the left hand isn't. And so kind of as a result of those two things, you're not really able to get your doubles loud enough, and you're not able to get them fast enough, because as you go faster, they get quieter, and they kind of get more wimpy and weak. And so if you get them loud, you can only go so fast, and as you get faster, they can't be as loud. And so that tends to be the, the issue with doubles a lot of times. And so as a result, they're just not smooth, they're kind of clumsy and choppy, and they don't feel right. But here's the thing, there's honestly just one root cause of all of these problems, and it's this. You're gripping your sticks too tightly when playing doubles. Let me explain a little more. Your doubles will never improve until you loosen your grip and you let rebound help you out. That's really key, that's really important. That's probably the most important thing we're, we're saying today that we're talking about today. You've gotta to loosen your grip, you've gotta let rebound help you with your doubles if you want them to be even and consistent and big and open and loud and fast. If your doubles look like this, where they're very pressed down, they're very tight, it's almost like they're tense and they're panicked, then you're not gonna be able to get them very loud and you're not gonna get them even. You might be able to play them fast. And I've noticed a lot of times with beginner students, especially kids, they'll, they'll get the doubles going and they're really nice and they're really fast, but they're, they're just very tight and pressed down and it's hard to hear the individual notes. It's almost turning into a buzz roll. And so what we wanna be able to do is play that louder, get more rebound, let things open up more, and then from there we can begin to slow that down so that it gets more even and more consistent. But the only way to do that is by loosening the grip. You've gotta have loose hands because it's, it's that tightness that's causing things to press down. You've gotta open up your hands a little bit and let things bounce more. The whole goal here is to use physics to your advantage. In general, in drumming, if there's anything that isn't feeling smooth and anything that just feels choppy or clumsy, it almost always comes back to grip that is just too tight. Like your hands are getting in their own way, you're not using physics to your advantage. Once you can do that, once you can be more loose, things naturally fix themselves most of the time where your time will improve and your fluidity improves. So here's what you gotta do. We're gradually, we're getting more nitty gritty here and we're digging into some specifics you can practice. But here's the principle you've gotta always have in your head. This is what you gotta do when you're practicing doubles. When you play doubles, grip the same way you would playing singles. So if you play singles, really loose, relaxed singles like this. My hand is just super loose and open. That same approach is what you gotta take with doubles. It seems counterintuitive. It seems like to play doubles, you need to tighten down a little more because you're playing more notes. That's not true. That's actually the opposite of what we wanna do. I think it's just human nature that if we're gonna play more notes, we feel like we've gotta try harder. If we're gonna play twice as many notes, it's gonna be twice as much effort, right? But that's entirely untrue. It should not be more difficult to play twice as many notes when you're playing doubles. It should not require any more effort than when you play singles. All that we're doing is we're learning how to manipulate that rebound, how to control that rebound to get an extra note for free. That extra note has gotta be for free. If we're having to pay for it, then it's, it's not, something's not right and we're putting in too much effort because at that point you're starting to use your wrist too much and you're not actually letting the, the rebound work and your fingers work, which is kind of a next step. So when you're playing slow doubles, you've gotta be open, loose, relaxed. Now as you start to get faster, it's okay to squeeze a little bit tighter. I've noticed in my playing that if I'm playing fast doubles, I'm definitely putting a little bit more pressure there and closing my hands a little more than if I'm playing very slow doubles. And so that's a very natural thing too, that as you go faster, you do need to exert a little bit more control but you still don't wanna squeeze so tight that you're getting in the way. You wanna have maximum rebound. I'd, I'd say practice your doubles where you're getting as much rebound as possible even as you're going really fast. So practice going faster but maintaining that big open rebound. So to get even more nitty gritty here, I wanna give you a very clear action step and a very clear series of steps really to take to improve your slow doubles and to therefore improve your fast doubles and your loud doubles to get things more even and consistent and not lopsided and not weak. 
In order to do that, we've got to master these absolute fundamentals. The first thing I want you to do is this. I call it the free bounce. I don't know if there's an actual uh, term for it out there. Hold your stick really loose. So you're literally just making a loop with your thumb and your first finger. So it's kind of like thumb and first finger are like forming a right angle. So it's like a kind of a V kind of thing like this. And you're letting the stick rest there. Throw it down on the pad or on the drum. Just let it bounce. If you've got a really bouncy practice pad, it will bounce forever pretty much, which is really fun. If you actually do it on a snare, you're not gonna get quite as many bounces, but that's okay. The goal is that it's so loose, super loose, that it just bounces, it keeps going, and your hand is not getting in the way of that. That's the key. It's gotta be smooth, uninhibited. It's gotta be an uninhibited bounce, hence the free bounce. So then once you're comfortable doing that with each hand, then practice stopping it after two notes, which just means bringing your fingers in, just grabbing it. So throwing it down loosely, grabbing it and then practice doing that with the other hand, and then slowly alternate both hands doing that. At that point, as you start alternating this really slowly, you're essentially playing very slow doubles with proper technique, utilizing the proper motion, using physics, using rebounds so that you're not using your wrist for each note. The same motion and the same technique you're using here, playing these super slow doubles, you can use as you're going faster. The same technique applies, the same loose technique applies as you're going quicker. And so if you're doing this right from the get-go with these really slow, like 60 beat a minute doubles, then you're not gonna have a problem playing them faster. And they're gonna stay open and loud and strong and even as you get faster. Now an additional step here, as you get your doubles together, as you get that motion comfortable, the laws of physics are working, you wanna start building up your finger strength. And so do the French grip exercise, that's what I call it. I didn't make this up. Plenty of other drummers do this all the time. I don't know if there's an official name for it, but the goal is to work out your fingers. And it's not so much working them out, it's more training them to be agile, training them to work and to play in time. You're training each finger to propel the stick because each finger is controlled by forearm muscles. You could be a bodybuilder, but you still gotta practice this. So it's not so much strength training as it is agility training. But do this a bunch, practice this on a pillow, build that finger strength because the fingers are what help even out your doubles and make them strong as you get really fast. You can use the pure bounce and looseness when you're going slow, but as you get faster, you have to start utilizing the fingers in order to even things out, which becomes a very natural thing. For even more detail on this, I did a video almost a year ago, breaking down the mechanics of doubles and showing some slow motion footage. So go check that out if you want some more detail to really see what my hands are doing and just to break this down even further. Also, it's interesting to me that this same technique that we use when we're playing doubles is the same technique we use if we're playing accent tap 16ths, one-handed 16ths on a hi-hat. That same loose kind of motion. It's kind of a molar type motion, but it's also loose and very similar to what we do when we play doubles. That's what we have to use to play this well in order to play those accent tap 16 smoothly. Otherwise, they get very stiff and clumsy. So if you master your doubles, it's much more easy to master the one-handed 16th. I love how these things go hand in hand, and I love one-handed 16th grooves, and so I've always been really interested in this kind of discussion. And so if you are, if that's you, check out my free guide in the description below where we break down all the steps you can take to get your one-handed accent tap 16th on the hi-hat up to 80 beats a minute. The goal is to get a fast groove going with those, with those funky 16ths. Really cool, really fun. And so if you're interested in really breaking that down more and really honing your skills on the hi-hat, practice your doubles for one thing. Check out that other doubles video, but also download that free guide. It's definitely gonna help you out. All right, that is all for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I hope this provided value to you and helped you out with your hand technique. And I hope that free hi-hat guide helps you out with your hi-hat playing and taking your grooving to another level as you improve your hand technique. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Have a great week.